improvisational comedy. You have been a member of the Big Hoo Ha, the Australian improv group, for many a year, and your yeah. recent show, Captain Spaceship, has improv elements sewn right into that. Um, improv comedy in fringe shows has just exploded over the last couple of years, especially among millennials like us. What do you think draws so many people to improv comedy recently? Um, I think improv, when it's done well, is very exciting and improv when it's done badly is still in its own way very watchable and exciting um there's an element of danger in improv obviously as a performer you go out there with nothing and you've got to rely on your own brain and the other performances to make something good and you have to rely on the audience to be there on that journey with you and one of the glorious things about improv is that the audience will have your back and they want to see you succeed but they're also aware that if you fail like it's not the end of the world. Like I've done so many things in improv shows that have throwaway gags that, you know, just died on their ass. And you need to be able to just go, no, nah, it really doesn't matter. Cause at the end of this night, I'm never going to remember anything I've said in this show probably ever again. Um, all I want to do is go on stage, do the best I can support my other performers and the other players hope they've got my back as well. And let's give the audience a hell of a show. Cause that's the goal. It's not to be like, I'm the star of this show. I'm the, I'm the big cheese. I'm the best improviser. It's like as a collective, let's give this audience the best piece of art we can in this 50 minute slot. Um, and there's something really magical about that and something very watchable as a, as an audience. And of course, going out there, watching a show, knowing the audience, uh, knowing that the performers have no idea what's going to happen and often having a lot of influence on the show um, is a very exciting thing for audiences as well. Mm. And it's handy because it's quite cheap because you don't have to have the responsibility of having props and costumes because you just have to rely on the audience's free imagination. Yeah, it also pays to have a, a good tech person that's ready to go on the fly. We've done lots of seasons of Captain Spaceship where we've just had like such amazing uh, lighting and sound techs where we're like, okay, here's a bunch of sound effects we have. These are some lighting states. Uh, here's a smoke machine. Just you got to roll with the punches. And we've had some really, really amazing techs that have just thrown great stuff into the shows, offered us awesome lighting effects. That like, you know, now it's blue and it's smoky, so it's cold. And we're like, okay, that's what we're doing. Great. Um, and we've just given them free reign. And it's it's so fun to have that extra player as well um, as part of the ensemble. So how exactly do you rehearse and practice improv? Um, well, it's different. For something like Captain Spaceship, we have sort of a, a very loose format for the show. We know there's going to be like this kind of beginning, this kind of middle, this kind of end. We'll have a guest in that plays a villain. And that's basically the only things that we know are definitely going to happen. Beginning, middle, end. This person's a villain at some point. You know, obviously there's going to be some kind of conflict and resolution. Um, so we just come in. We just have we have characters that we play um, constantly for, for Captain Spaceship. We have ongoing characters. So we just have like just rehearsal shows where we just do like mini half hour episodes where we just try stuff out, work with different guests. Um, and just have people come in and just throw stuff at us and see what works. And um, But you can't really. Like, it doesn't matter how much you rehearse. You, at the end of the day, it's about just building the strength of the ensemble, I think. It's about building that team hive mind where you know each other's strengths and weaknesses, you know things that are going to delight each other on stage, things that are going to challenge each other on stage. And it's about having that sort of like that little wheelhouse in your head of when I'm in this show, this is what I can throw to these people and we're all going to have a, a really good time. Uh, whereas a show like The Big Hoo-Ha, where we do lots of short form games, um, we just we just rehearse the games. We rehearse, um, you know, usually weekly or monthly and just rehearse a bunch of games. People bring in brand new games that we try and we just, um, yeah, we just practice in different combos and just get to know each other and throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Are there any jokes that you come up with at rehearsal and then when it's time to actually do it in front of an audience, you sneakily bring it back on stage? In an improv show? Sure, un, un, unbeknownst to the audience, um, pr probably not. I, no, nothing springs to mind. I'm sure. I'm sure there's gags that we've done in the big hoo ha a thousand times when we, we play like our one liner games and we get the same suggestions over and over again. So I'm sure there's there's jokes that have come up. But with something like Captain Spaceship, where it's long form and it's very very different every episode, um, it's pretty pretty rare that we'll bring something back that was in a rehearsal. Often we'll do callbacks to previous episodes because they're it's like an ongoing story. So there's, a little, you know, that kind of stuff. There's callbacks to previous episodes, but there's nothing like, a, oh, really good joke that happened in rehearsal. Let's put that in the show. That's, that's pretty rare. Unless it's very, 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 very good. I remember I was talking with uh, Perth giant Sam Longley and big hoo-ha member. He's a uh, giant man and I love him. How, 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 old, how, how tall is he? Like six, eight or something? I, I think he's six. 
10. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're in a show together at the moment and uh, all the publicity photos were quite difficult and it made me realise that I'm quite short when standing next to him. I've seen him squeeze into into black uh, lycra, which was very, very fun and very interesting. But he was um, talking to me about improv the other years ago and he said... Rule number one when it comes to improv, try to have a joke or some kind of story based on the prompt spatula because so many audience members think that they're just so clever because they're like, oh, spatula, think of a thing spatula. So apparently that's some sort of like common suggestion from the audience. Spatula. Yeah, I would say spatula, dildo, gynecologist, taxidermy mm. are the four that come up the most. And every single time that person thinks they're the first person to ever, mm. ever think of them. I've seen a few improv shows, like maybe even just two ever, that are not comedic. It's like improv Shakespeare, another mm-hmm. one that that escapes me at the time. But what do you think it is about improv that makes it so intrinsically comedic, apparently? Um, I think there's the immediacy of it and there's like the, the fear behind it. And it's getting laughs in an improv show. It's It's like a reward for taking that risk, mm. I think. Um, I've, I've done a few improv shows that weren't like inherently comedy that may have had elements of comedy, but that were serious. And that's a whole like fun challenge as well, especially as someone that's, uh, you know, quite a, a comedic performer to do a show and not have to rely on the, on that, on that, um, uh, that crutch, you know, of, of comedy of just going, I'm just going to sit in this scene. I'm just going to play the truth of it. I'm just going to act how this character would act with these other characters. And there's something really exciting about that as well. Um, even for an audience, just to see the push and the pull of the, of the tension rising in, in a scene of the drama and then having little moments of sort of like comedic relief where it kind of just bursts that tension for a little while and allowing that kind of tension to build up again. So yeah, it's, it's fun to do, to do both.